Yeah, it might be. Honestly, <laughs> I'm having a hard time with that shape. It could be any number of things. Yeah. Rolled up in on itself. It's interesting. We got more zoom for that That's thing. Maximum <laughs> zoom. <laughs> or a maximum <laughs> zoom, yeah. Maximum <laughs> zoom. That full zoom? It is. Oh. Hey, friend. Yeah, we it don't does. don't know what you are, but we love you. It does look. It almost looks like a shell. It doesn't look soft. Like a barnacle-like yeah. shell. Can we zoom out? Yeah. I'll see if I can get closer. Wow, they're really tall here. Yeah. Just amazing to see a massive Hercules piloted by Robert uh, just come right up next so gently, right up next to this bamboo coral, hoping to right, zoom in. give us a little bit better view, a little more close-up view. Have a look at the tiniest of forms and creatures. And then have Amber take us there with this camera zoom. And it didn't seem like it helped a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, still being Looks mysterious. like there's some hydroids on it, whatever it is. Yeah. Do you think it could be an egg case? Yeah. I'm stumped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be any number of things. That's really interesting. Aliens. <laughs> I heard yep. that. <laughs> <laughs> that was for the end. Oh, there's a black coral in the back. Oh, sure enough. Yeah, look at that. Oh. Good spot. That's beautiful. Oh, it's waving. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's black easier. coral. It's that right there. I think Osaka wanted a, a zoom on that black coral, if if can. Well, um, after we're we're done with the, with um, the mystery object. Yeah. Eight yeah. <laughs> coral. Uh, show. At, I'm at my max here. Interesting. That one's a little harder to get to, right? Yeah. And hiding behind this bamboo coral. Smart, smart little guy. Smart little black coral. There's a little coral. shrimp right there or something right there to the right. Well. Oh, yeah. Waving. Viewers at home or, or at work or at school are guessing. Uh, could be an anemone. Mm -hmm. It looks sim very similar to bathopathies. It's got... It does. Um, it's got that fern-like structure. Oh. Actually, I am incorrect. It does, but it's not the exact symmetrical bathopathy yeah, shape. Yeah, because it's got it's the alternating branches. It's alternating branches. I apologize. No, um, you're, that's okay. I don't know if it's still in Schizopathidae then. I will check there first. Okay. Oh, good? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we're good. good. Yeah. Thank you. I think so. Thank you. Looks like some pretty well-developed manganese crust here, too, which is starting to suggest that this is an old seamount. Perhaps not of Hawaiian origin. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hawaiian hotspot or Cretaceous in origin? That's the question. That is one the of question. many. One of many, yeah, one of many. At the moment, I am leaning toward not Hawaiian hotspot. Oh, um, we've got some, got some early bets we, being made. Oh, we There's shall no see. Oh, I like it. Yeah, it doesn't mean I'm right. All right, <laughs> people, sh you heard. You heard it here first. Put your money down on yeah. Cretaceous. Can you, can you tell us? a little bit about what's making you lean towards that direction? Um, I am seeing quite a bit of very well-developed uh, manganese crust. Um, and I, I've potentially already seen two layers in a couple of spots. And uh, uh, the very thick manganese crusts are often an indicator uh, 
pretty much a dead giveaway that you're looking at Cretaceous rocks. Can't tell you how thick they are. Uh, that's something I have to do on board uh, once I cut the samples open, but it's a uh, it's it's looking like those very well developed botryoidal textures that we see on the other Cretaceous seamounts. Mm, okay, and presumed c Cretaceous. Botryoidal. <laughs> and that is that's different from uh, the other seamounts. Uh, the Hawaiian hotspot um, seamounts uh, along this area probably do have manganese crusts too. It's just they may not be as uh, thick because they're. Uh, the seamounts here are uh, uh, produced by the Hawaiian hotspot. Those are around 25, 30 million years old, about that range. Mm. So they'll, they'll, they'll have some incrustation, but um, it, uh, the maximum thickness of those won't be the same as uh, uh, what the Cretaceous seamounts will look like. Oh, OK. Yeah, just so babies, just babies, right. 25 million years. So you're, so then you're thinking these are much older. I, I'm I'm leaning toward Cretaceous at the moment, but that that Great. assessment could change. Great. There's uh, my understanding, and Dr. Val, um, please expand on this for for my sake and for viewers. But uh, there's a there's a line, there's a hot spot, a ridge that seems to have been moving from north to south during the Cretaceous across the Pacific. And then that was somewhere in the range of 120 to 60 million years ago, uh, give or take, handfuls of millions of years. And, uh, and then around 25 million years ago, we had a, another hot spot, mantle plume, moving across mo largely from, well, from northwest to southeast, but mostly, mostly west to east that was forming the Hawaiian island chain. And then we're right at the intersection of those those lines still just in the early stages of understanding that and, and perhaps even challenging some you know some currently held beliefs about how some of the Pacific was formed and made and shaped but um, but that's kind of where we're sitting right at the intersection of those two lines bang on yep. oh I'm getting better <laughs> proud of myself that was really just me quizzing myself and sorry internet um, but wow. that was uh, uh, that was me just uh, how many times have I had to have this explained, Val's a, Dr. Val's How a How many times have I had to have this explained? <laughs> yeah. A patient, a patient, teacher, and friend, uh, and uh, yeah, and sometimes it takes a few, a few rounds to uh, really cement something in your head when you're learning just brand new stuff. Absolutely. So don't give up on it if you're out there and going, oh, this is too much, and not. I'll tell you, it's. Uh, you know, you make progress. Just one of the slowly. best things I ever did for myself was uh, taking mineralogy as a geology undergraduate, and then uh, taking it again as a master's student at All a different right. university. Oh, I get two. I learned. I learned so much teachers. both times. Oh, that's smart. Wow. There's a. Really? What's the uh, mahina or kukui? Oh, wow. the They're so hard to spot. Wow. Oh, yeah, this one looks different. Is it a halosaur? What is that? No, I think this is a synaphobranchidial, although I always say that. <laughs> it looks like, like, like it's rounder rostrum. Yeah, so some of the ways to tell are the tail, um, as well as the mouth. It's Could got it be a cusk eel? <laughs> Oh, 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 it's got nostrils. Yeah, yeah, it does. Oh, that's what those were. Little beady nostrils. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, oh yeah, those no, are for. that is a synaphobranchid eel, I believe, because of the tail, the fins, and um, the the, the well-developed um, uh, dorsal and anal fins that are connected in the back. Cool. Mm -hmm. They are also, I believe, called cut. Nope, I'm not gonna. Let me. Let me triple check. I think they're also called, they have a, yeah. another common name that I have forgotten. Cutthroat eels. Oh, I should have been confident. I knew Cutthroat. it. Cutthroat, nice. Yes. Yeah, they need Hawaiian names too. Cutthroat eel, come on. Mm -hmm. Come on, <laughs> come on English. I know, I don't entirely understand what where that comes from at all. Um, Do they look like cutthroat trout? Not really. Oh. Why'd they call cutthroat trout cutthroat trout? I'm not sure. I don't know. Wow. This is pretty, too. 
just a point of curiosity, Mahina, the Olelo Noel that uh, translates to not all knowledge is learned in, in one school or one house. Uh, oh. do, you know, do you know the Arkukui? The Olelo Hawaii for Can that one? Can we get one? a quick zoom on these? Uh, Those look different than the other corals. Unless, if we've passed already, that's okay. I think there's a mushroom coral under it, too. We can come back to it. We uh, zoom in. Okay, zoom in. Oh yeah, good spot. Okay. Nice spot. Well, they just Virginia. look very different. It looks like, actually, it looks like some primnoids that might have there. Really? That's oh. a branching pattern we haven't really seen yet. This cruise underneath is a primnoid. I, I think this, this is, is the primnoid here. Yeah. Yellow on top. And then uh, the mushroom coral below. Yeah, mushroom yeah. coral below. That is looking like a primnoid, although the the base is looks very thick. Um, but it does have that, the delicate, um, um, polyps that mm -hmm. I associate with primnoids. Okay, awesome, okay. thank you. And that anemone on top of it as well. Yeah, there's another one of those black corals there. Mm, mm hmm Yeah. And we've got several oh, more wow. of these bamboos. Oh, and we've got more paragorges. We've got some of those potentially paragorges over here as well. And uh, I think you undersold this dive, Dan. Oh we tried. <laughs> we, were, we were hoping for just like a normal, normal day. You know, just. No. I'm so happy. It it's already beautiful. Normal day in the altar. Yeah. That's right. Looks like some more branching primnoids by those paragorges. Yeah. Yes. Nice. You're doing Thanks. amazing. Kukui's over here, just awesome. There's some really amazing teachers aboard this ship. Ew. There sure mm. are. Mm. Saka says maybe Christ of Gorgia Day. Christ of Gorgia Day? Yeah. Ooh. Which would explain... Yeah. Oh, the branching style, yeah. That yeah. little delicate, yeah. those delicate palms and branching. Mm -hmm. oh, and they weren't scaly. Yeah, so usually primnoids, they have a lot of sclerites in them, and so they almost look a little reflective, almost scaly. Oh, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, I wonder why I went with primnoid and not chrysogorgia. It's okay. It's the start of the shift. We all make mistakes. See, we're starting to get the down slope current. Mm -hmm. And more junk in the water. Yes, Dan, I actually found the Olelono Eau. Aohe Pau Keike Kahalau Ho'okahi. And it translates to all knowledge is not taught in the same school. That is an Olelono Eau, a Hawaiian proverb. Just speaking that we always are learning uh, different homes, different environments, different halau, and from different kumu. Hi. Ono. I feel like we have so many different hollow on the ship and in <laughs> one hollow. It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Communities within communities within communities. Mm. It's a gift. Coexisting but not so friendly at three PM cookie time. <laughs> <laughs> we forget our aloha at cookie time. What is going on? Hey, snack time's a big deal. Uh, oh wow. yeah. People used to stake out on the Falcor uh, and, <laughs> uh, and like just like kind of go, we kind of start like gathering like piranhas in the galley you around 3 well p.m. waiting for the hour, pirate hour. <laughs> yeah, the, oh my the, uh, the snack cabinet would get refilled. Some Sometimes there were Snickers bars. I don't oh know gosh. if the ancestors would be so impressed with us at snack time. <laughs> hey, being at sea makes you hungry. <laughs> it does. Surprisingly, yeah. yeah. I definitely eat more here than anywhere else. Yeah. Atlantis has a never ending supply <laughs> <laughs> of cookies. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> they have an ice cream freezer. <gasps> what? Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like, how would you even do inventory for that when you're ordering? Because <laughs> yeah. you just got to figure each person's going to eat five ice creams What a is day. that in the moving through the <gasps> center? Is that, that one of those? Oh, oh. holotherian? Yep. Oh, hey, oh that's a cool holotherian. Oh, wow. Yeah. Those are oh, you're awesome. Weird. 
That's not like one of the normal purple ones. I think that's a xenophore. Is it? Yeah, you can see the the lights right on the sides of it. Oh, fascinating. Can we turn the the lasers off real quick? I got that. Oh, oh, oh! Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh, goodbye. Just drifting through. Then our thrusters. Oh my gosh. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> that was wow. a little bit of a roller coaster. Sorry, buddy. You can't see the reflected. Oh, wow. Beautiful Tina 4. Wow. Yeah, I've never seen one quite like that. It doesn't seem to have the long strands. Um, it's kind of a weird shape. I think I um, I think I may have had a uh, close encounter with one of these on a. Blackwater dive. Really? What? Wow. That's, uh, That's amazing. Nah. Although I'm not super familiar That's with Tina Force. These are really cool. Um, so for anyone who is unaware, Tina Force get their name because they have, um, uh, instead of Nide, like Nidarians, they actually have um, team which are sticking cells instead of stinging cells. Um, hey guys, this is the lounge. Oh, is this Sebastian? Hey Sebastian! <laughs> um, that is a predatory tinafore. Oh. Um, the blackness in its center is its stomach. So that's where the tip of the black, that's where its mouth opens. And the black stomach is to conceal its food while in the water column. Wow. Oh. What's its food? I just swallows, from my understand, other Tina Fours, jellies, etc. Oh wow! Amazing. Oh, Amazing. thank you, Sebastian. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian with the Tina Four knowledge. Amazing. Oh, what's that in there? Can you zoom in? Yes, I mean. Oh, right in the center oh. here. Could nice spot, be? Robert. Could it be? Oh. <gasps> nope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it fooled you. I thought there's eye spots down there. <laughs> we, we had a moment of, is this a Dumbo? <laughs> it is not a Dumbo. Oh, no. It's one of my favorites, though. This is a Venus flytrap. Hey. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> They're pretty cool. Hey, I'm it's a win. about it. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. These, These are, are awesome. so fun. You can actually see that it's um, got sort of two, like it, it's its oral disc actually kind of has two lobes to it. It's got a top and a bottom. And so it'll sit open like that, like a Venus flytrap. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. So pretty. That one is pretty large. It's yeah. huge. Oh, can we turn the laser lights back on? Oh, right. Lasers. <laughs> So sorry. We are the worst back row when it comes to remembering <laughs> that. Excellent. It's the contradictions of the deep sea. We are the world's greatest <laughs> and also the worst. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when it comes to lasers. All right. Awesome. Thanks. That's cool. Good spot. I think I'm seeing lots of evidence of holothurians, okay. though. There's a lot of poo. I'm <laughs> seeing a lot of sediment. <laughs> a lot of sediment, too. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. beautiful features, these also geological a lot of these, features. Yeah, lots of very interesting features. And these bamboos, they look like they are, um, well, they are, they look very similar. Like, they, they're all planar, so they're sort of in a single plane, like a piece of paper. Um, and the, their nodes, the black portions of their skeleton, um, is not where they're branching from, so they're internodal branching, which is really interesting too. So there's a and there's a couple different taxa that are like that. Um, but some very very large rocks here. We're looking at the toes of some lava flows here, but I'm not entirely sure what all's going on with the morphology just yet. Definitely lava though. This is actually about the point when we're right on top of the ridge and we can start heading up slope. Yep. Are you there? Gotcha, yep. gotcha. Okay. We are. 
I can let you get out ahead and then get the ship to move. All right. Predatory Tinafore. Mm -hmm. There's actually several predatory Tinafore. So okay. Just, your, our bearing is going to be about due to That might have been a bathy bathies there. I think so. Oh my goodness, look at all those bamboos. It's a bamboo forest almost. Mm -hmm. It is. Wow. How did we, uh, ridges, how did we manage this again? Wow. Yeah, the water's murkier here, definitely, and looks like we're going into a little bit of a current. Yeah. At least it's not blowing it's us too much to the side. Mm. Wow, these boulders are very much, call it like, the tops of them are almost completely covered in these yeah. large bamboo corals. They're liking that current. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Oh, this one's got encrusting on it too. That's really interesting. And we've got one of those ophiroids and... Can you zoom in? Well, there's a pseudoanthomasis there, too. Ooh, mushroom coral. Yeah. A small one. Yeah. Pseudoanthomasis, and oh, then there's... Oh, another type of bamboo, too, there. The proper That's anthomasis nice. is the stalked, stalked mushroom coral? Yes. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah, I think... Yeah, you're doing fantastic. Oh, those are interesting black corals in the back there as well. Yeah, that's that's what I saw a little bit earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe bathopathies? Maybe. Um, probably. Is yeah, that's interesting. Oh yeah, I don't know about bathopathies, but that one could have been okay. a, a cladopathidae. Okay. Um, there's several taxa, including heteropathies that could that fit that similar um, branching style, at least. Okay, so the branching style wasn't quite right. For bathopathies? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm kind of going by the, the thinness of the branches as well. Okay. Um, we'll go down and find a... But also without look, like, without zooming in on the, the polyps, it can also be hard. Yeah. So this overgrowth here that you were looking at, is this oh, kind of yeah, like the zoanthids we've got some that we... Oh zoanthids again, looks like. And that's interesting. Wow. Did you want to zoom in on something particular? Yeah. We don't have a great spot here, but... Yeah, if we could just zoom in a little, I mean, this is actually a really great view because we can get a good idea of a bunch of these, but um, these parazoanthids here would be really interesting. And then, okay, yeah. Okay, can we zoom in? Okay. I just, I'm on a not very good perch here. So. Okay. Awesome. But it looks like it's in a snow globe. Yeah, that's fantastic, awesome. If you can zoom out a little bit, and then there's um, some black corals at the base of this that I'd love to get a look at, if possible. Um, Where are they? I think they're um, over in this corner a little bit. 
over here. Yep. That's yeah, right it. there. That's all I got for uh, pan over that way. That's okay. great. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Take you can pause right it. there. Okay. And it's in the background. Yeah. 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 No, but that's fine because we can. You can still kind of see it's branching and the the polyps. So. Awesome. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Out. All right. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Sounds like we. Um, we, we might have uh, Tina joining us later if she can uh, help with some of the ID. Oh, great. Yeah, getting the dream team on. Awesome. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sediment down here. Yeah, that might be one of the reasons why all of these are on these such large boulders. Yeah, oh, definitely. Mm, that and the current. Um, yeah. Oh, there's a tiny eel. Sorry? Where's the eel? Oh, it's in the Atalanta camp. Oh, there you ah. go. Oh, yeah. Oh, a McCruid. A grenadier. Beautiful. This is a lot of bamboo. Yes, it is. A lot. That's yeah. Um, I mean, even even if we even if we'd already just stopped at the all the bamboo that we'd seen on all those boulders, I would have been very impressed with this dive. And they keep they keep showing up. Um, it's pretty amazing. Truly. Yeah. Um, and, we, and we've seen a couple different types of bamboos. Um, yeah. The branching style has been a little bit different in some of these. Um, which is awesome. Amazing. And they're huge. Some of them are very large. Yes. So some of these have been around for a while, presumably. Correct. That is correct. We're also seeing a lot of skeletons, too. Well, I think, you know, if, you know, in, in places where the, you know, wow. In places where there's, there's availability Holy like cow. that, you know, you can see a lot of these actually look very similar. Um, in shape, but they're very different that's sizes. A that's a beautiful crinoid. Yeah. yeah, they're very different sizes. Um, and so we could be seeing, you know, multiple generations. And so, I think you know, so. some of these, some of these dead bamboos might just be, um, you know, part of the life cycle. Um, also, it could be broken branches. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it does look like there's some. I mean, maybe some of this is loose rock, and so some of it's fallen down, and so that's hit, that would obviously take you know, um, the bamboos with them. And as well, if they're on any loose pebbles or, or um, cobbles, you know, yes, exactly. They will just fall over. Um, so that's another common common um, issue here. Wow, so these are kind of difficult to see in the screen. Do we have time to zoom in on one of, one of these corals here? I think they're more of the same, but because it's, um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're blending in quite well. Yeah, because they blend in so well. Um, I just mm -hmm. want to make sure for anyone who's doing the analyses later, these are these are slightly different. Um, oh wow, and there's more of them than I thought. Yeah, these are. It looks like this is a nodal branching, um, which is really cool. Great. Can we look at the larger one as well to see if it's the same as this one? Sorry, I know I'm changing things. <laughs> Robert yeah. and yeah, Zach. Yeah, this one on right the, here would be great. On the controls, on the joysticks, 
Yeah. I think See, driving. The problem is, masters. you know, when I get this other one in the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's the branching quick, actually looks, by. it does look the same, and then we do have that nodal branching, so that's that's pretty fantastic. Oh, and there's a crinoid yep. in there as well. I think I saw, uh, I don't know if it's a predatory tunophore as well, but that orange lump on it. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. tell what that was. Sorry? Uh, there's there's a small orange uh, animal near the top. Of, yeah, right there. Oh, Couldn't an quite anemone. Tell what it was. All right. Probably. I yeah. Get out of here. Awesome. Yeah, let's Thank get you. moving. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. Robert and Zach and Catalina taking us up the ridge, along with wow, the. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Along um, with the bridge oh. from where we made contact and around near waypoint one. And, uh, and falls off pretty steeply on both sides, especially especially to our left. But the great view of Hercules from Atalanta. If you want to toggle over to camera number two. As Hercules explores. Yeah, it's actually it's really interesting that we're seeing all these this this diversity of bamboos. They do look very similar, but um, some of the key the key structures are different, and so that's um, again that branching. You know, whether it's branching from the black node or whether it's between the nodes, as well as the branching style, the number of branches, and and the symmetry. Um, so it's it's really interesting to see that there is such a diversity of these bamboos. Um, especially since I think sometimes you can see just a forest where it is just a single type of bamboo. There's a bunch of stuff up um, there. And nice we're seeing see kind diversity. of a combination, which is really interesting. Sorry if I interrupted. No, I think I was interrupting. I apologize. I was wondering that this looked like some uh, Potential rock samples to the left, Dr. Vald. Are we? I was we thinking the same thing, or? but it's really hard to tell how encrusted right. those are. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting so good. Absolutely. Are you sure? Yeah, you want me to be louder? Um, That's rare. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Thanks, yeah, Amber. I'm trying to get a sense of. Uh, what might have uh, uh, basalt underneath it, and what might even mm. just be like all crust? I mean, either, either has very high scientific value, but I'm, I'm just trying to get a sense of uh, what's underneath some of the textures we're seeing here. So, um, yeah, I am looking out for a rock, but I haven't seen, um, haven't quite seen the opportunity for it yet. Great between uh, density of the uh, corals and just, uh, you know, um, kind of what we're seeing on the seafloor. So we'll find a spot. We'll, well get I, there. I know you weren't waiting on me to, to, to <laughs> identify a good spot, but I thought, hey, I no, see some, not, I see some rocks. Look like you could pick those up. We were looking <laughs> at, at the same thing there. So you've got an eye for it. <laughs> wow, this is so impressive. They just keep going. And it's actually kind of interesting because it is really difficult to see them against this, uh, this yeah, backdrop. Yeah, the color is almost it just mm -hmm. looks like sediment and rock when you're just looking at it. But as you look closely, you see right. all these bamboo corals. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Very different, but also beautiful from what we experienced yesterday on yesterday's mm -hmm. dive. Right, and, right. And, uh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot going on here. Glad to see these, this bamboo coral forest. This really, this is a truly a bamboo coral forest. This is such a dense. This is a high density of of um, corals. Oh, shrimp. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I've seen this density before. It's pretty impressive. Um, I think there was a dive that I was watching from the last. Um, oh, that's a. How cool about these little pukas or these a series of pock marks there? Dr. Val, Ooh, yeah, along the left, what what causes those little uh, little openings to form over you know, time? I'm not sure, but it would it it does reflect here, on the. Can I get a zoom on this? Do you this? see that purple? Yeah. Oh, is that the purple you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a crinoid, yeah, but I could be wrong. Crinoid. 
There's a couple of really beautiful crinoids. Um, yeah. Wow, just kind of closed up. Yeah, but it is beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's Sometimes these are are crinoids the same as feather stars that we see swimming in the water column. You know, Sometimes I, I think so. Honestly, the common names trip me up because there's feather stars and then there's sea lilies, and mm -hmm. I have to remind myself that I think lilies have a stalk. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But basically, they're stalked and unstalked crinoids. Um, and so these are in the uh, Iconodermata, so they're in the same larger group as um, urchins and cucumbers, etc. But um, these are, um, and uh, and these are branched, um, and they they do they just they sit on top of these corals, and they're so beautiful. There's um, there's several Use different really species. Kind of looks like a Met Gala dress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Just a beautiful. Well, no, Mahina about to hit the fashion <laughs> runway. Yeah, it's like one of those. Uh, Go get them, girl. Whale. Yeah, <laughs> I was just thinking I that. Think, I think it is. That's oh. a beaked whale. Uh, wow, now good what's spot, the, Robert. What's making you say that? Not that I disagree with you. I'm just, you know. We're not, we're not collecting here. Huh? Sorry. I don't think I don't think this? it's a target, but it's beautiful to see and hear stories about. I know we were encountering several of those further south in the Pacific. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And it does. Um, I yeah, I think that's that is one of them. Wow. And you think that because of the the shape of it? Yeah. You can see Almost? like the round bit in the back mm -hmm. down here. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think we can collect rock. those. No, oh, it's not no, a rock. Have, yeah. No. Yeah, I, I don't think we're permitted to uh, collect those. Oh, I wouldn't. I mean, it is a anyways. rock now, yeah. but it was. <laughs> True. Wasn't I remember that was before. what the geologists and biologists were fighting over, right? Who's who's going to get to keep this sample? <laughs> oh, but not on this exp not on this particular dive. Yeah. But okay. thanks for pointing that out, Robert. Yeah, that's, no, a yeah, that's, spot. that's a great spot. That's a great spot. Yeah. Yeah. The the wow. the puka question. Um, it's hard to say exactly how they form, but it uh, the the crusts do reflect the underlying morphology of whatever they're encrusting, mm -hmm. just like they're. <laughs> um, so there there may be some gap or some collapse in uh, some little air uh, whatever's that underneath it. And that's that's just kind of uh, uh, forming around that. Cool. And uh, it becomes a little recess in the. Uh, in the manganese crust. It's interesting just to see them laid out in kind of steps as they, as yeah. they made their way up that one little feature that we were looking at. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is looking kind of uh, sheet flowish, so there might be some little uh, spots where, uh, you know, bits of it broke through for whatever reason. So that might be a little bit of what we're seeing there. And something noidal. Botryoidal. By the way, <laughs> botryoidal. Botryoidal. All right. Botryoid will have to say it a hundred, write it, write it a hundred times like my teachers used to make me do in middle school. Oh boy. Botryoidal, tenophore, yeah. We, we like our strange words. <laughs> Botryoidal. Hey, at least I'm not throwing a bunch of acronyms around the control van. You guys would uh, probably uh, toss me off the side of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> so how long do you think that, um, that bone was there to get so encrusted? Um, well, not knowing how thick the encrustation is, it's hard to say, but it would have had to have been there for a very long time. I'm okay. just going to have a look to see how long beaked whales have been in the ocean. Yeah, that's see. the other part of the equation that I don't know, so I'm reluctant to answer. Oh, they're, they're old, I think. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're thinking, I mean, if you take the average growth rate of a manganese crust at, you know, a few mil, uh, millimeters every million years, and that one's been there for a while. Mm -hmm. it's, it true. at least has a coating. And they were, they were very deep, the beaked whales are very deep diving right. whales. About 15 million years ago, so that might have could have been an uh, early beaked whale. What are you 
doing here? Interesting preservation yeah. uh, in that case. Amazing. So yeah, no, that, that makes sense that it's got some manganese encrusted on it. Might have been cruising around looking for food around this uh, Hawaiian hot spot right when there. it ran into this Not Cretaceous right. Sea Mount and uh, Possibly, met its yes. end at Sorry. the hands of a megalodon. There's a point yeah. right there in that channel. Isotope stories, right. we, got, we got something <laughs> right. to put in the book. Yeah, it looked like it might have been attached to the substrate too, so even if we w had wanted to sample it, it probably wouldn't have come. Yeah. So best to leave that as a... Uh, you know, part of this landscape. So Absol Kui's absolutely. saying that there's a puhi, an eel over here? Oh. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, cool. right below from where that yellow line yeah. is. It's hiding out, huh? In the sand. Like right um, Come on, right you there? did a puhi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, sure oh. enough. <laughs> oh, I wonder if it's saw your marking, little... city. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Good spot. Nice spot. So big is that a... If you're just joining us, we are on, okay, on the seventh uh, seventh dive of Ala Amwana Kaiuli Path of the Deep Sea Traveler Expedition in Papahanamo Kuakea, NA 154 Exploration Vessel Nautilus Ocean Exploration Trust, in collaboration with so many amazing partners. And um, this is the eight to twelve watch. And we're all ready. Can you believe that we're already, already three already hours in? <laughs> Wait, what? Already being treated. <laughs> Just being treated. An incredible. Wow. Yeah. Another incredible Mauna Kai. Mm-hmm. Well, I wonder if that's a, you know, that's got a, a tipped tail point and it had a pretty rounded face. I didn't get a good look at its, um, and its pelvic fence. Oh. It could be one of my favorite fish. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Hmm? And I'm not going to go with the Sanafabranket eel this time. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it, it could be a snailfish. Oh, a snailfish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are exceptionally cool fish. Um, they have some of the deepish, deepest um, uh, fish that they've ever found have been have been snailfish. They have adapted, um, what is it? Uh, pectoral fins? Yeah. I think they've got a, a, some adapted fins so that they're, they're able to hold on to, um, hold on to things. It's pretty amazing. They're really cool. And they Sounds like it. And they come in very different colors occasionally. So, yeah. So they got all sorts of stuff going for them. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm so sorry that I interrupted you, Dr. Val. <laughs> hmm? I'm so sorry if I interrupted you. No. The, the, yeah, the no did you? No, um, you didn't. I think you were talking with Daniel about... No, so, um, something else came up. That was operational oh. order. Oh, okay, okay. You're fine. Okay, <laughs> this is great. Oh, and there's another little crinoid. Oh yeah, sure enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been seeing uh, a couple of those darker colored crinoids uh, last dive and this dive. Yeah. It's like deep cool. purple to black ones. Starting to see a little more contrast oh, in the that's color. A sponge yeah. there, a little Walteria. First sponge of the dive that we've spotted. Oh wow, look at how thick that one is. Oh wow, mm -hmm. yeah. Looking strong, looking it's strong, fuzzy. buddy. Uh, would would you amazing. call these uh, one unit of bamboo? <laughs> well, this might be a couple units. Yeah, there might be a couple <laughs> units. I think yeah. you're right. Two <laughs> units of oh, bamboo. Yeah, and see, it's got a it's got an, an anemone on it as well. Is it weird? Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Very cool. 
Is that one of the um, fly trap anemones that we saw earlier? I haven't gotten a good view of, of it, to be honest, um, but it could, it very well could be. Um, there's also some, uh, me they start with an M. Um, there's some other, I think, Matridioidea anemones that um, do that as well. Um, not just the Actinocyphia. Um, uh, but it, it might still be that um, Venus slide trap. It looks similar to what we just saw, and it does have that curve that is uh, associated with it. So, interesting. Some of our viewers at home are, are thinking uh, perhaps a cusk eel. Awesome. Um, the the uh, eel like fish that we saw earlier, not an actual puhi. It's an ea. Are you ready for me to come out? Yep. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Great. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Look at that view. That is unreal. How's the current treating us? It's okay. All right. Glad so to hear it. This uh, ridge line is uh, feels like home. It's, it's uh, clearer water again. Mm -hmm. Feels like I'm climbing up the Ko'olau, getting ready for a lookout over uh, Waimanalo or Kailua, Mauna Wili. All right, um, I'm gonna get us to keep going up so okay. this way. Just Beautiful ridge line. Yeah, this, this reminds me of like an old growth forest of bamboo. <laughs> it really does, doesn't like it? Walking yeah. through an old growth forest and then you see some of the the skeleton or fallen fallen trunks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Love being deep sea travelers with you guys, this is with yeah. the, the team. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. A lasting impression from last night's dive was uh, the Patrick Sea Star <laughs> imprint, <laughs> and then see oh, yeah. I was multiple Patrick Sea Stars. I was still thinking about that this morning. Yeah. It's just like, wait a second, there used to be a Sea Star. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> what oh. happened? Patrick's I brought that up. Um, one of my friends, she's an educator in Orange County in California, and she has a fifth grade class, and I did a ship to shore with them. And I brought up Patrick Sea Star, and the class just went wild. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so happy that you know children still watch SpongeBob. <laughs> oh, yes. well, they love it. Yeah. SpongeBob Not really want a balloon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not all is lost in this world. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Fighting over the rock blanket, SpongeBob and Patrick. Yeah. You guys know that episode. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> this is amazing. Honestly, we just the abundance of corals that we're still seeing. It is it is truly an old growth forest. Yeah. And you know, one of those other things too is coral rubble. Um, coral rubble and coral skeletons can be really important for um, attaching all other, like all sorts of other organisms too. You know, we, we see these anemones and, and um, ophiroids on, on top of the live coral, but there's also the hydroids and, and encrusting barnacles and all sorts of other organisms that can grow on top of the dead skeletons as well. Um, yeah. You know, this is every portion of these of this these bamboos can be can be really useful for for this entire community and, and including you know the the um, bacterial community. They often um, live on the exposed skeleton as well and that can be really really important for recycling nutrients so 
It's, it's pretty interesting to see that here. Mm -hmm. See him thriving, especially on top of the ridge. Of course, we, we can't see down either side of this ridge. It's fairly narrow. I, it looks on, on the topo map to be, you know, maybe certainly less than 100 feet, um, 30 meters or less kind of wide and uh, falls off really sharply. Um, wow, look at all our, those. To our left. But uh, this ridge line is, you know, we picked a pretty good dive plan again. Nice job, Dr. Val and, and, <laughs> and Rennie and the whole team. Wow, yeah. All the crew that's been mapping so diligently. We have a, a great question from coming in from uh, Australia about accessibility to some of the 3D maps, um, the multi-beam surveys that we conduct. Catalina, do you know, uh, in, is there a format in which people can access some of the maps that... Uh, and, yeah. and how long does that take, knowing that we, we just mapped this really today? Yeah, uh. so as for the data that we're gathering on this cruise, I don't exactly know the timeline that um, OET has for releasing their data, but um, generally like the idea is for um, data to be made public on a server such as NOAA's uh, NCEI database. Yeah, um, There's NCEI. a really big, a big bathymetric database there. JEBCO has one as well. Yep. yep. Um, you can download grids and... Um, yeah, it can be a little bit of a hassle, actually, because it turns out sometimes that you'll get surveys that are transit surveys for really long transits. So sometimes extracting data can be tricky, but yeah, you definitely can do it, and it's public public data. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Catalina. We also have, uh, thanks for Dr. Val just pointing out to me, we have uh, data manager at OET.org um, for all kinds of questions about the access to, um, to data that's collected, including that bathymetric data. Um, but also, you've probably heard Kukui hammering away over there, making sure we're logging all of these observations. And uh, this is really a, a data collecting exploration effort. So tremendous amounts of data. And yeah, so for our friend from Australia, we appreciate you tuning in. And uh, have a look around the website. Um, check out JEBCO and and uh, other sources of bathymetric data for, for these updates. I imagine yeah. it will take some time. I think um, there's another really good resource for bathymetric data, which is um, AutoGrid. AutoGrid. Um, and that one will have process data and then will make it into a, a usable, a more usable format, like a TIFF, um, which you can then throw into your QGIS or ArcGIS or, um, program. Um, and it, you can also save it, I think, as a as um, sort of a picture. You can convert it to a picture. So that can also be more usable as well. Love it. You're talking to, uh, asking the question to the right group. This is a map-loving, mm -hmm. map-loving group of people on board the Nautilus. Uh, we like love making it. maps. We love looking at them. We love uh, using yes, them. Yes, we do. And uh, so useful. And I'm, I feel, uh, I feel fortunate to be surrounded by so many map-loving nerds like myself. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Maps can be very informative. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, there's a whole there's a whole research field that's I mean pretty much just maps, and now there's yep. portions of um, you know ecology that's trying to find ways to use maps to predict habitats, um, uh, which can actually be really useful for protecting things. You know, like. The, the idea is basically like you you take a map of this area, like right here, right? Um, you add in some of your environmental data and then you go and you see, okay, so where else do we find some of this environmental data? Where else do we find, you know, a slope that looks like this or this type of, yeah. you know, sediment and the amount of current? Um, and then you're, you might, and then you might predict that there could either be a similar coral species or, you know, this abundance of species um, and that can be exceptionally useful for um, management, um, as well as, you know, like cruise planning. And then, you know, I mean, the it's it's a huge field of species distribution models as well as um, habitat modeling. So Absolutely. I'm, uh, I've been getting more and more into the 3D mapping um, mm -hmm. and modeling, building uh, my best attempt at simulations and, and uh, environments and in, uh, in three dimensions, virtual reality, extended reality applications, augmented reality applications. So fascinating what's gonna be possible. I can't wait to see in the next 10 to 20 years as we are able to uh, tell these stories utilizing some of, uh, some of this technology in ways that uh, don't distract us.
but bring us out into the world and help us see it in new ways. It's going to be fun. Oh, we've got some Minecraft enthusiasts who are waiting for those bathymetric maps. They want to <laughs> they want to model the ocean, ocean floor in Minecraft. I love it. It's a great a great platform That's for awesome. creativity and, and world building. And uh, you can just pretend you're, you're your own mantle plume and just see what you can build in Minecraft. It'd be great. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I use GMT, generic mapping tools, uh, to generate maps uh, of the seafloor, which I can use to, uh, you know, through isotope data plotted on these maps, uh, trace various plumes through time and space. Yeah, wow, that's And where awesome. they overlap, you know, where, where they might be interacting, yeah. I can tell, I can tell everyone listening in, uh, Wow, it's a, it's a treat to pull up uh, Google Earth and look at the ocean is a whole new experience when you do it with Dr. Val. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, really, really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another thing, too, is a lot of this data is already out there in um, very useful formats. So you can also go Esri, um, the ArcGIS. They have a hub that you can look through their data that they already have processed, and you can look through their... F you can filter by what's free. Oh, yeah, we've got something... Yeah, I don't know what that there. is. Could just be seafloor, too. A gremlin. <laughs> yeah. Is that the gremlin in your computer, <laughs> Amber? Could be. We, uh... <laughs> I think it's a rock. <laughs> just for context, we are really close to the edge of that very Someone steep ridge off to the left. So we're, if you look at it in Atalanta view, you can sort of see a uh, herc position right on this ridge line. It's not as steep of a slope off to the right, but uh Yeah, that might be a rock. Oh, <laughs> come on. Come on. Be something a lie. Oh, definitely not a rock. <laughs> I think that's a rock. Oh, it's a rock. <laughs> it may have tumbled down somewhat recently cuz it's uh just not sedimented, so that makes it stick out. Yeah. Come on, jump at us. Right, yeah, Surprise us. Little, little squat lobster hanging out under a rock right there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to concur. It looks like a rock. <laughs> it's a rock. <laughs> See if you can find SpongeBob and uh, Patrick. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> Kukui probably uh, just logged that. Bell spotted a rock. <laughs> <laughs> right? I can write and it in. Invent log. It. Yeah. <laughs> Geologist spots rock. Older, uh, <laughs> coral down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, incredible to see what's happening as uh, this effort continues to map the seafloor. I'm just uh, so amazed at the progress being made to try to align some of these online databases and shared data across institutions and nations and organizations. And then, of course, the work we're out here doing, new transit lines, mapping new seamounts uh, in high resolution, and just the difference between the satellite uh, imagery versus what we're able to get oh, from the yeah. ship is so impressive. So it's so yeah. different. It's really interesting how they get that data, though, um, because I'm pretty sure they're using gravity. Yeah. Um, yep, and changes in gravity based on basically, you know, the amount of uh, mass mass in a single area. And so if yeah. you've got a sea mount, you've got more mass in one area yep. than you do somewhere else, which is just so fascinating. Uh, um, quick operational jump in. Yeah, uh, right. This looks like this might be a good place to take a Niskin. Oh, oh genius. Oh. Yes. Oh, right. No, just we need science. to take a sample right. of something at some point. We're doing science. That We're is doing part science of here. our, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm over here looking good up catch. fun facts about bamboo corals. That's I haven't seen a good place to grab a rock, and, uh, well, this looks like a really good place to do an eDNA, so yes. yeah, we'll no, do that. Yeah, great. <laughs> Be beautiful Sorry. view. <laughs> no, no, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, get... the, the predicted uh, bathymetry from the gravity data is, is, it's really just this brilliant tool that we have. And yeah, uh, for, for uh, lower resolution efforts, like when you're looking at like ocean basin scale uh, mapping efforts, it's such, it's incredibly useful. I, I use uh, I use the old Smith and Sandwell data set all the time. But when you need those details, you need that bathymetry. Can't really bring a vehicle down here. You could, but you'd be lost for a while without uh, without that high resolution uh, imagery we get from those yeah. multi-beam scans. 
Yeah, I'm seeing some good stuff down here. A couple types of bamboos. We're seeing some of those, uh, I believe those are still pseudoanthemastis. Yes. I think I've been seeing a couple of black corals here and we there. We have so. seen several black corals of, of different um, different types with different types of branching and um, size polyps. And yeah. the perizoanthids, we actually, I think we have some just to the left of us as well, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And a, a plura, a, oh, not a pleurogorgia. I've been told that's changed, but there is a, a Chrysic orchid um, earlier as well. Which oh, is, okay. Um, but a different, a, 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 a different, I called it a primnoid, that's why. Oh, um, oh, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, a different variety than we've seen in a little, um, actually, maybe uh, this entire. I think you're right about that. Um, which is pretty interesting. Wow, well, look at this. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just amazing. This is true, truly astonishing. Gorgeous. One of our uh, great explorers at home, tuning in online, uh, shared a, a really interesting resource for mapping. Um, those of us like us who love mapping, it? SOAR. You are, okay. S O A R dot. You guys are Earth. both very quiet to me. Oh, okay. So. Is that better? Yeah, if it's closer, I think Robert's just off. Which one are we going for here? Um, you have all bottles available, um, probably except number three. Okay. So if we go for six, we got to really watch back there in the back of the row. Okie dokie. Sounds good. Because it's hard to see back there. Everybody watching? Mm -hmm. Everybody's watching. Yeah. All right, come here. Made these things anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Yep, it went. Nice. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Those are the world famous bingo balls, 3D printed right here. <laughs> right here on board, right? Right, yeah. Robert? Right here on board, EV Nautilus, 3D printer. Amazing what the ROV team can do. S-O-A-R dot earth, SOAR. Hey, Dad, this is Data. Mm -hmm. um, confirming that was sample 057. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Check it out if you love maps, pretty cool. Community mapping platform. Oh, that's cool. What is Thanks to our viewer sharing it with us. Yeah, thank you. It's always wonderful. Like a lens flare or something. So, so there's something interesting in Atalanta Cam dead ahead of uh, Herc that you can see lens in the upper flare. left corner. Oh, yeah. Sort of a sponge? Light on yeah, it. I don't know. Yeah. Trombone? Maybe. <laughs> A French horn, I guess. It's a little big. <laughs> I, I guess that's where they get them from, the deep sea. <laughs> oh. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool ridge here. Hurt. I had to pull the camera back in to get the disc and model, so that makes it more mm, okay. reflecty. Her Hercules taking us on a beautiful hike. We'll climb a total of just over a thousand, a thousand vertical meters on this dive tonight to get to the summit. I don't know how many horizontal. I think it's about four kilometers. About four yeah. kilometers, nice. There it is right here in uh, Hurt Cam. Oh, there you go, good spot. Yeah. Beautiful sponge. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, we haven't seen as many sponges on this dive, just uh, one or two so far and uh, this one's coming along to say hello to us. Is or we're coming is along to say hello to it. a stock sponge or no stock? I can't, doesn't look like there's a stock. Uh, I don't see one just yet. Not seeing one. 
Kui, you got an idea about what this one is? Uh, uh, that's a very good question. You don't have to. I just <laughs> <laughs> Off the top of my head, it looks like some of the hexactellids that we might have seen yesterday. I would also go with hexac hexactellid. Uh, it looks a little... What was that? Very What's that really big one, though, they were saying? Where's, where's the information on that one? Uh, this one looks like an ear. Yeah. It kind of does, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, is it just me or is there two sponges in there? It looks yeah. like there are two. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, definitely two. Oh, wait, two. there's like three sponges right here. Look at all yeah. the oh. Uh, oh, mushroom yeah. corals there, too. And a corallid. This is such an interesting... Ooh, this this is, is a wild bucket. distribution. Oh. oh, I wonder... That might be... There's a couple really wild-looking sponges. It's very oh. cool. It's got a lot more holes in it than that one does. Huh. Is Sebastian awake? <laughs> <laughs> lounge, lounge, lounge. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> yeah, that one on the left does kind of look like a. Well, I have low confidence in my sponge identification, but it's um, that one looks like a unstocked sponge. But these are very interesting. They're both unstocked. Beautiful yeah. though. Mm -hmm. Sponge beautiful. within a sponge. A very interesting um. The pattern of the patterning on these is really interesting. I'm not sure what the large one is, but the smaller one, is that like a uh, foread or something along That's those lines? That's kind of what I was thinking um, because of the holes in it. Um, yeah, because it's, it's got that sort of folded texture yeah. to it. Yes, the, the sort of folded on the holes. Is, is sort of how I think of it, but usually they're a touch larger than that one. Um, so these could just be euplectalid other, um, other euplectalids. Um, and actually, yeah, that the one with the, on the left, that one does look like a euplectalid. Um, This one with the its holes are so very delicate on mm -hmm. this other one that makes me think it's that's not it's not the same um, general group. Mm -hmm. But they are beautiful. Yeah. And there's these, the anthemasses behind them as well. And more bamboos, which is always lovely to see. Yeah, you know, it could be these Uretidae. Um, Uretidae seem to have those very delicate, almost circular um, holes in them. Well, that's interesting. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're about ready to move on here. So, <clears throat> it's interesting sure. little uh, cove. Yes, yes, yeah. It's so interesting to see them in that small outcrop. Yeah, that there's we had another it. little sponge yeah. over there, too. And actually, we've got like maybe three different types of bamboos here, too, because this one is different from this one, which yeah. might be different from this <laughs> one. <laughs> Oh, geez, this is wonderful. So current's definitely picking up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, you can see it whipping by. Yeah, it's coming actually from where we're heading. Yeah. Right okay. So yeah, it's still down slope. I'm wondering if any of those rocks might be sampleable there. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Do do we have, uh, would this be a good moment to try to get a rock? Yeah, yeah okay. we're not This is the first real opportunity I think we've had. Looking so we're going to go for it. Yeah, they look angular. About the right size. 
Just hope, hope yeah. they're loose. They look like they ought to be loose. Huh? Looks like they are, yeah. I, I would hazard a guess. I have been wrong about this before, though. Nah, 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 nah. We won't, <laughs> we won't count those times. Hey, I'm okay with being wrong. That's part of the process. <laughs> it's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, just about any of these look good. Um, Oh, we're getting more, it is, oh, some folks actually in all caps, seems a little aggressive, but okay, <laughs> suggesting that it's an ear sponge, which I love because my favorite limu, my favorite algae in Hawaii is pepeo, which is the Hawaiian word for ear. You guys are getting all kinds of Hawaiian words today. Kind of eyeballing that one. <laughs> pepeo. Another question coming in about uh, the onboard 3D printer and how it compensates for ship movement. I think most of our 3D printing probably happens in port, but Robert could answer that no, question when he's not collecting fine. a rock. You no, can't use the resin printer, but you can use the, the uh, filament printers just fine. The they P don't care PLA about. works just, just fine, huh? Yeah, the 3D Amazing. printer was going today when I was down in the data lab. Oh, oh wow. wow. Ooh, that one's that's pretty a big. big one. Yeah. <laughs> what about this one right here? Oh yeah, I like that one. Have you picked up a rock that you don't like, Val? <laughs> there was yeah. one. She she gave up one. What? Yeah, we earlier. we think we got a section of just crust uh, uh, yesterday. She mm. rejected that one immediately. Yeah, that one looks great. <laughs> Beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah, Ola ke oa kanaloa. Yeah. Yeah. Ready? All right. Alright. And you have any and all boxes available to you. <laughs> all right. all just expressing our gratitude for uh, being gifted that. Kanaloa right. making that easy right. actually. Yeah. Just happened to come across the right little patch here. A little bit of patience and yep. it's going to come. That's right. That's excellent. Excellent work. Yep. That's what the Seamount gives us. Ew. Oh, oh, losing the box. Oop, let me see if I can pull that a little bit more. Yeah. Right. That's it. We may get a bonus with that, too. Spin it. Yeah. Oh. oh. Oh, no. Doesn't want to go. <laughs> Doesn't want to go. It's gonna go. There it goes. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to have the crowbar ready. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes our the scientists, the rocks are oh, just a little bit, maybe <laughs> not quite too big for the they bio just boxes, but they fit mm. very snugly. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> very snug fit that requires a little bit of finagling to get the box to close. So I'm yeah. not sure if, if uh, 
This anyone could be a problem. Yeah, yeah it might not be able to get it back out. That's being shared on the live stream. That is our current. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, you might have trouble getting that one out. We might need a new, we might need a new tray. Might have we'll, to 3D print a new tray. We'll what? deal with that once uh, Herc's <laughs> on deck. That's a tomorrow problem. I think you said that yesterday, too. <laughs> yes, I did. And I was not there for the retrieval because um, I, I was a little under the weather, but... Uh, yeah, it looks like the the rocks were all retrieved safely. They were retrieved. They were retrieved. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they were. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Awesome. Excellent work. But yeah, there are very few rocks that I've met that I do not like. Yeah. So <laughs> they all have their stories to tell. And even if they don't, sometimes they just look cool. I'm I'm easy like that. R rocks, you know what? I got nothing against rocks. They're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not alive, right? They are not alive, but they do tell. They they continue to tell stories. They're pretty. Um, you know, they can host alive things. They sure can. Which is a benefit, you know. And I don't know. It's, it's hard to, uh, it's an ages old debate definition of life. Mm. If Earth is alive, you know. Oh, yeah. Then, uh, then what on Earth is not? Yeah. yeah. So it's a living planet. And we're just one teeny tiny little aspect of that Earth striving to understand itself. I love that. Just a very different lifespan. Yeah. For these rocks versus the corals versus our own lifespans. There's some parts of the earth where that lifespan gets even longer and you're uh, you're looking you're looking into the Hadean in some places. There's a, it's a tiny little patch of rock uh, near, uh, I believe, Hudson Bay in Canada. Yeah, it goes almost all the way back. It's like four or 4.1 billion years or something like that. And that's wow. that's like super deep time. That is, got, that is amazing. You got like uh, even older zircons from uh, the Jack Hills in Australia. Zircons? Yeah. Is, is that a type of rock? Uh, it's it's a mineral, um, okay. and it's pretty commonly found in rocks. Uh, it's very resistant, and uh, it incorporates the right kinds of elements that we can use those to get uh, age determinations. So they're basically t these tiny little chronometers that get preserved in the rock record. Oh wow! And well, the host rock, uh, the original rock that these uh, Jack Hill zircons were part of, has been long eroded away. We find them in a slightly younger, you know, still extremely old, but slightly younger um, sedimentary formation. You can pick these zircons out and get, get these age dates off of them that uh, take them back to something like 4.3, I think, billion years. Oh, zircons. Well, that's, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, very deep time. Zircons. That's very cool. Wow. Can we get a zoom on one of these bamboos to confirm that it's still similar to what we've been seeing? Right. If, if we're in a good spot for that? Yeah, all good. Awesome, yeah. This is that. Internodal branching. Again. Sort of planar coral. Uh, bamboo, I'm sorry. Well, bamboos are coral, so that wasn't wrong. But yeah, this is interesting. It does look pretty similar to what we've been seeing, which is fantastic. Um, slightly different branching. And you can see interesting you can see here that the the polyp structure is slightly different there which could yeah be, could be uh, kind of there too 
predation, could be mutation. Oh, so there. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Oh, and you can actually see the hydroids and such that are colonizing it. Just barely. It's like a nice little shimmer over those, um, over the, the skeletal branches. Yeah, because these growth patterns, they do have a very significant genetic component, right? Oh, we've got oh, a little hey, friend buddy. here. Yeah. Oh, little crab. Mm -hmm. It's a little squat lobster. It has a different lobster type of squat lobster than we've seen. If a, it, it's got the general shape shape of a... Okay. I saw your PBS article about everything turns into crabs. I know, <laughs> it's carbonization, yeah. It's got the general shape of a mutidopsis, but um, I could be wrong there. Galathaid, um, Anamirin, squat lobster. That's wonderful, that's great. Yeah, fantastic. And it'd just be a lobster and just hang out. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. So it keeps just climbing up there. Wonderful. Well, we can, uh, yeah, we can, we can move get on. moving. Thank you. So that article was talking about true crabs and fake crabs. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I said a crab crab, it was right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I think I was talking about that the other day with the, the Paraloma species. I don't know if you all remember the super spiky crab that we saw yeah. a while yeah. back. Yeah. That is not a true crab. <laughs> what? It's just yes. a crab, not it's a crab crab. A, it's just, yeah. yeah, it's just a kind of, it's, it's a kind of, a, kind of a crab. It's, uh, <laughs> it's got, it's it's got three legs on each side um, instead of four. Oh, um, and that's okay. One of the key, that's one of the key tell, telltale signs. Of a wannabe of crab. A, of a wannabe crab. <laughs> okay, three legs versus four legs on a side. I can yes. remember that. Yeah. I can count to four. Wait, I'm a musician. It's, it's actually, it's, it's, you know. Um, yeah, but like the the true crabs, which I believe are brachiarian crabs, those those are things that look like um, stone crabs, um, fiddler crabs. Um, I'm trying to think of some other dungeness, you know. Um, they're f sort of flat, and they've got that half of a football shape, you know. Um, those yeah, are they, those are the true crabs. And they start out like the squat lobsters with the longer tails, and they get <laughs> shorter and shorter and wider. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything does. I think it crab. happens to us all. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's crab. <laughs> Everything is crab. <laughs> Everything is crab. Everything is crab. <laughs> Wait, so are the like the not real crabs, the wannabe crabs, like pseudo crabs or? Pseudo crabs. Um, yeah. they're actually just. Uh, it's it's the they actually aren't called pseudo crabs. It's it's uh, it's king crabs or lithodes and true crabs. It's. You know, okay. there, no one's no one's shaming them for their not being. A, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody but the eight to twelve watch. Right, <laughs> we're all about crab. Hey, no crab shaming here. on watch. Yeah. That's right. We love all. I, I will not crabs. stand for that. And non-crabs, <laughs> whether you're a crab or a non-crab, we love you. Absolutely, yes. Oh, I still can't get over this uh, this bamboo forest. Um, I looked up some some little fun facts about bamboos because I've got all sorts of things, but I don't know. I don't know generalizations, and apparently bamboo corals um, are found at depths between 400, which is also kind of unique. So they're not they're not shallow water. Um, 400 and 4,850 meters. Wow! Deep, deep. Yes, that's a pretty big depth range. The maximum size is nine meters tall. Oh and that's 30 that's pretty feet. Tall. That's oh. crazy. Over, yeah. That's pretty um, tall. That's bigger than you, Dan. A little bit. Yes. Wait, are we talking about crabs still? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we have switched on to bamboo corals, but just, you know. Um, a 30 foot crab would be something to see, yeah. though. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. That I'm not sure an exoskeletal animal could get that big, though. So yeah. that would be pretty heavy. That'd be very heavy. But, well, maybe in the it deep sea. The water, it's lurking, it's lurking out there somewhere. 
It's True. Working. People people have been studying that gigantism for a while. Could be could be any number of things. Actually, I think they they looked it up recent. Some there were some uh, pretty amazing researchers because there was thoughts for a while that there was that gig gigantism because of like oxygen, the coal, like carbon during the carboniferous. Yeah. Um, they found that one 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 really common. Well, actually, no. The deep sea still has you know like giant isopods and all sorts of giant other giant organisms that are larger than their shallow water cousins um mm -hmm. and it's they think it's um food they think it's actually to uh fat deposits the ability to have increased fat deposits huh mm -hmm. wild well it would be important living living in the deep sea to be able to store more more food yep yeah, yeah it makes these, total sense these bamboos are absolutely stunning And they're coming in like waves, right? You get, you get like a sheet of bamboos, a wall, a wall of, of a, a dense forest. But yeah, keep slinging the uh, bamboo facts at us. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I saw, I found this other really interesting one. Um, some of them. Uh, can we get the laser lights off for a second? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're, we're still camming over here. Yeah, I'm gonna try to take a pretty picture. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> what was I saying? Um, yeah. Oh, uh, two pretty interesting things, and and some of this information is coming from um, a website uh, hosted by Ambari, um, and uh, they have a lab there that um, has all sorts of information on on these corals. One piece of information is sort of the sp their specialized um, adaptations or um, morphologies and, and behaviors to keep predatory um, snails and sea stars from eating them. One being, apparently there's a species that has some um, extra stinging stinging, uh, like stinging cells? cells on the, the bottom portion of their their stock hmm. um, and this other one which I thought was fascinating there are some species I believe it was um, some species of bamboo that they have done studies of that when a uh, sea star approaches or is on them they will bioluminesce to attract predators of the sea star. To come get what? the sea star. Smart. Yeah. Really? There is always a bigger fish. Come and get it. Yeah. Open, open for dinner. That is that is some smart adaptation. I know. Yeah. Is that a corallid in front of us? I believe it I is. I think so. Yeah, beautiful. Although it could be a could oh. be something else. Nope, that is definitely yeah. a that is a one of the things I love about these dives corallium. is just it, I get to say, hey, I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had that heavy corallium dive. We had uh, we're having this bamboo dive right now. We had yesterday's incredible wow. dive. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is. And these are growing on pillow basalts. Oh, uh, so uh, exciting. Yeah. We're oh, right wow, at the exciting. midpoint of our expedition, and it has already blown our minds, given us Absolutely. more than more than we could have ever hoped for or shot. imagined. And, this is uh, why I like coming back. Still giving us more. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sign me up. Yeah, so you, it just, it's, it's such an incredible uh, experience each time you get to go out to sea. Always worth it. I'm so thankful for the time to process this learning on the fly out here. Well, of course, it will take uh, weeks, months, maybe years and lifetimes uh, once, mm -hmm. once I get home to fully comprehend what we've enjoyed and experienced and learned. Yeah, that is, here, the, that is the, that is the um, unfortunate aspect of having so much abundance. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a long time to count. <laughs> yeah, as as the person who has done the counting of <laughs> organisms by video before, it it takes an astronomical amount of time. Yeah, I believe it. Astronomical, yes. Um, Science team is working hard. Yeah, I was... A couple of years ago, I was annotating 20-minute videos, and it would take me four days wow. to annotate one 20-minute video. 
And that wasn't even the hemichorallium dive. No, it was not. That's why you give them to the grad students. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough life sometimes. It is. They need to be paid better. Nah, true. Thank you. True. <laughs> grad students do not get paid enough. Yeah. Much appreciated. It is true. It is. Uh, we need to support learning in all the ways, all the yeah. different forms it takes. We, we need to invest in it. And um, our communities uh, have not in right. invested in short-term short -term outcomes for, for too long. And well, it makes uh, it unaccessible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very much so. It's one of the many, one of the many shortcomings in, yeah. this, in this line of work is, is that and it can be really difficult. Um, yeah, and I needed a little extra financial support from uh, my folks every now and again to make it. Not everybody has access to that. That's true. Oh, uh, can we get the laser lights back on? I got. I did get some pretty pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we're looking at a bunch of uh, uh, little pillow flows interweaving with each other. Oh wow! So it just kind of look like little snakes with little fingers, kind of working their way downhill. Kind of braiding, braiding their way down this ridge line, huh? Yeah. Cool. Interesting. So you, you can kind of see similar as a terrestrial analog when uh, uh, Kilauea is erupting. Sometimes you can see those flows sort of snaking over each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, there's some really good examples of that uh, when you just drive around in the park. It's fun, especially when it's live happening and you see, uh, you know, these they're relatively slow-moving flows, but they'll, they'll kind of cross paths and one might fold over another one. And mm -hmm. yeah, really, really fascinating. It is. So yeah, with these, you can see that kind of radial structure. So that's a pillow and you can see those cooling joints that kind of oh, form wow. that radial so structure. So clearly, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I need and to log And then the gooey center. <laughs> Do my job. I've got Kukui over there doing her job and my job. That's so wild. Cooling from the outside in. Oops, so that cool. So Might have cool. captured a Thank minute you of that. Thank you for sharing seconds. that. You can yeah. see other, it's not quite as clean, but you can see it now. I'm, now, I see, now I'm seeing it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, once there's you point more. it out, you're like, oh my that's gosh. Awesome, this is that's everywhere. one of my favorite things to show with the Telestrator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another one right here doing the same thing. Yeah. Oh my wow. goodness. So these are just so these are individual pieces of the bubble flow that has that radial cooling and then like goes off and breaks off from like other yeah. parts of the flow. Yeah. So you're looking at a cross section of that lava flow. Because those points are weakened during the cooling, yeah. So that's yeah. just how the break. It's just like some it's creatures. It's gonna break preferentially right? along yeah. those points, yeah. If we're here for a minute, can we get a good zoom on this? Get those radial patterns hole? in some shallow water urchins and other things in intertidal zones because they they want to break off oh, in really? this sort of preferential way. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, the echinoids have that uh, that symmetry, that yeah. by, that radial symmetry. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool parallel. Yeah. Yeah, we're seeing some beautiful, beautiful lava morphology here. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> we're glad. We're glad we are uh, coming up on the last uh, 15 minutes or so of of the 8 to 12 it? watch. Okay. It's um, off to a great start. I know we're all looking forward to seeing what, uh, what we get to observe in the morning already after we hopefully get a good night's sleep. And, um, yeah, so lucky to be with all of you. Thanks again to all of our viewers viewing on Nautilus Live and on YouTube, well, sending wow, in your so questions, definitely. your stories. I'm gonna check out some of the branching right yeah, here on the it's end. Got a some of these extra branches. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, look at that Atlanta it's view. Got branches coming out of cool. the center. <laughs> huh. It looks like there is. Yeah, well. you're right. <laughs> no, what are we? What are we seeing uh, from Atlanta <laughs> right now? Right, we're we're seeing, seeing that we got to get up. Climb, baby, climb. Snuck up on this thing. Good eye, Dan. So, yeah, I've, I've seen uh, morphology a lot like this in the Lao Basin, too. It's just you get these stacks of pillow lavas. Wow. Just stacks and stacks some, and stacks and stacks. There, so yeah. Stacks on stacks on stacks. You heard it here. <laughs> this is where it's all going down. That's how I'm going to tag this, stacks on stacks. <laughs> it's not kicking up dust, so it must be okay. <laughs> pillow lavas for days. <laughs> oh, I love this view.
This and is how you build a volcano. <laughs> Wait, what? How and this, you, kids, is how you build a volcano. That's awesome. Okay. Just stacking the lavas atop each other. Oh, oh yeah. okay, great, <laughs> it's just, yes. Literally, this I was is, like, what? <laughs> this is, this is, uh... It's how the earth is made, children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Nice one there. Pele throwing a party. You better believe it. Oh, look at that one. Oh, wow. Isn't it oh beautiful? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, and I just now that I'm learning, start slowly learning the physics of it, and, the, you know, this is so, it's so cool to now just see it everywhere. I hope our viewers at home are, are seeing this sort of radial geometry and the, these preferential break points uh, in the rock due to the cooling that uh, Dr. Val has been helping us understand uh, in these pillow basalts. This is the kind of angularity that we look for in the samples. That's why we look for angular rocks. Why I say like wedge-shaped. <laughs> it's all coming together. Yeah. Oh. Sorry if everyone else is already like, yeah, we, we, we learned this two weeks ago. <laughs> I'm just catching up. But the thing is, there's always going to be somebody who's, who's going to be learning that. I so, uh, you know. It. We're learning along with our audience. That's right. Yeah. And this is also making some beautiful substrate for uh, uh, all of these nice. bamboo corals and these mushroom corals, uh, up. black corals, yep. occasional sponge, hiding places for eels, yeah. eel-like fishes. Yeah, the squat lobsters. Lots of good hiding spots. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this dive is something for everybody. I like a yellow coral. I'm just pulling a different direction just to get us a little off the wall. We're okay. Yeah. I yeah. just gotta get caught up here. All right. For those people who want to do graduate studies in marine science, mm -hmm. could be geology, biology, ecology, and combination of. It's, uh, what, advi what advice? What advice? We've got uh, some amazing, amazing young students. You know, but between Virginia and, and Kukui, different stages in your learning. But uh, what would your advice be to people considering that or thinking, I'd really like to try it. I'd really like to try it out. I've got I've got realistic advice and I've got the like Actually, Robert you want to turn follow up a your bit dreams advice oh. kind of let's, going hey. let's hear both of them yeah okay. let's hear both realistic advice is make sure that if you're going into graduate school that it's something it's a degree that would actually translate into your job career path excellent um, there's several people I know who go and get these degrees and they don't know what they want to do and that's fantastic but then then they have spent all this time and stress and, um, uh, you know, they're working towards something that actually all of a sudden they, they don't have a passion for anymore because they realize it's not what they want to do. I wanna, they don't want to continue in this field or they don't want to continue in this um, area of research or they don't want to continue in academia and then they feel like they've wasted a lot of their time. Yeah. Which one is not true because you learn so many things in grad school. It's not always related to your, you know, specific work, your specific research, your specific field. Um, they've learned so many other tools, and it can help them. It can help you get jobs, but just making sure that what you're doing, it's what you're going to learn, is going to actually prepare you for your next steps in, in um, you know, in your in your career path. Smart, practical um, advice. It's a big investment of, of energy, time. Oh, All the learning yeah. is is, is difficult. You know, space, yeah. you know, yep. um, yeah. you know, and um, but the other one is like. C star. You know, unfortunately, yeah. kind of the complete opposite is like just go for it. Yeah. If you really think that that's what you want to do, go for it. Find a way. Um, yeah. There are there's funding opportunities. There's grants. There's scholarships. Talk to advisors. Talk to people. Um, yeah, don't be afraid to call uh, cold volunteer. email, folks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's how, that's, you, that's how you find opportunities. That's, and yeah. actually, cold yeah. emailing is how you do it, and it's yep. so difficult um, yep. because you can't just be like, "Hey, I want to be in your lab. My name. This is my name." You gotta like. The way that I felt like it was I, I had to read papers, and sometimes that meant I had to go to a library to use their access to papers to yeah. actually read some of the papers that these people were I was interested in working with. I had to, I had to go find access to the papers because yeah. there's often a paywall, and then <laughs> yeah. I had to figure out what about their 
recent research I was really interested in, and then I would take a, a past paper and say something like, you know, I'd pick out yeah. one, and I'd be like, oh, I also really like this paper you did like t 10 years ago. In some ways, you it's know. just called building trust. It's called uh, being the kind of person that someone would want to take under their wing or would work with. Uh, right, but also really it can be yeah. really intimidating knowing where to start with that, too. Yeah, I bet, I mm -hmm. bet. Oh yeah, I remember when I was doing this, I had no idea what I was doing, and so I was Same. going, I was going through schools like, um, just just what people did at each university, you know, and I would go through, and I'd be like, okay, so this person does this. Am I interested in this? Does this actually sound fun? Does it sound interesting to me? Um, and so reading those papers helped me be like, oh, actually, I don't feel like doing that sort of research. Like, yes, yeah. I think fisheries is really important but I don't actually want to do that. Oh, interesting. And, um, you know, reading those papers and making sure that you are interested in their research and the methods that they're using and the area that they're looking at and that you could you can create qu questions for yourself. Um, I love it. And if you have an undergrad advisor uh, or somebody that you can talk to in your department, they're a great resource um, for getting you started in some of those pathways too yeah. because they, they have a network. And Absolutely. you know, if, if they're using that network correctly, they'll, they'll use that to help you make connections within the community that you want to jump into. That just yeah. brings me back to the importance uh, in any endeavor, in any work that you do in, in relationships. It's often, often so connected to uh, the way that we talk to one another, the way that we, um, the way that we treat one another, the, the people that we come to know and trust and want to work with. Uh, whether that's through, you know, whether that's initiated through a, a cold email, or whether it's through an undergraduate advisor, another person in your life, someone that that helps you get connected, um, getting to do this work is uh, and continuing to do the work is uh, is all really still Absolutely. boils down to to relationships for mm -hmm. for so many of yep. us. I've heard I've heard Dr. Val talk about um, some of the very important relationships that that she's had with mentors, advisors, and teachers, and I'm sure and I've heard the same from Virginia. And, it's life-changing. Uh, Kukui, yeah. and, and everyone in this room can do point to people who have helped us along the way. Kukui, do you have advice for people as well? Oh, no, I think you hit it spot on. I mean, I'm not, not in graduate school yet, uh, but um, I can, uh, what Virginia was saying about being sure about um, what you want to pursue your graduate degree in it should be something you're passionate about, should be something that you're excited about. And I think undergrad, undergraduate studies is a great time to, to be able to find that passion. Um, I remember when I was, um, I'm a recent graduate from the University of Hawaii at Hilo, and um, the marine science program there is so diverse. And I remember going there and just like being able to be immersed in this environment and just from there, I mean, it was great, but it was also kind of confusing for me because like, oh my gosh, there's so many cool things. What am I going to do? But mm -hmm. I, undergraduate is a really good time to pursue that, to pursue searching for what you want to do for your career. And like, it doesn't have to be the same degree um, when you go into graduate studies. I've had friends that went from geology to microbiology for their PhD program. Yep. And mm -hmm. I also had some advice from some teachers and from some of my internship advisors, like take as many internships as you can, do as much as you can, get involved as you can. And I feel like that's a really good way to figure out your passion and um, what you want to be doing. Well, good advice in general from both of you on just how, on all three of you on just how to be what we like to call hammers. Just some hamas been this back science road doing amazing work at, at all their own different levels and their own different fields and ways. But uh, again, I just want to say, I think for me, it boils down to, you know, the subjects are fascinating. I love all of your areas of expertise, the things that you bring to the table, but it's really so much more than that. It's really about who you are, how you treat people, the examples that you set that really uh, shines for me. The people really, that you really work with is critical. Absolutely. Absolutely critical because, you know, but you you can love the science but the wrong advisor the wrong uh, personality it, clash right? yeah can ruin it so yeah, a lot of my decisions have, have been like you know personality match yeah. with advisors can be one thing i found too though is um having confidence in yourself and also having a community around you 
um, that is supportive and kind of understands what you're going through, that can help you get through uh, even a, even even dealing with people who are difficult. Um, I bet, yeah, yep, that's true. You know, if you if you know that actually you're in the right spot, and you are, if you're if you're applying for grad school, you are in the right spot. Um, I love it. And so, but sometimes you're dealing with people who, you know, make you feel like you're not, and that's that's the lie. Yeah. So. Hey -o. Hey -o. Yeah. You guys definitely belong right where you're at. I'm glad you're there. I'm glad you're here with me, and uh, also glad we get to go to bed. This is uh, this is uh, the eight to twelve watch. Uh, we're being kicked out. The, yeah. The, the, the twelve to fours are here and can't ready wait. to sh ready to shine. And I can't wait um, to see what we're gonna see in eight hours. They're they're gonna love this just like we have, and uh, I'm gonna hand you off to. Uh, one of the kindest voices ever ever to be heard on Science Party Line, Carolyn. So uh, enjoy it, everybody. Aloha, ohio, see you, see you tomorrow. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in so far. Um, we just finished a watch change, and or we're still completing a watch change, so um, stay tuned and um, we'll be back in the chat in a, a few moments. And good morning.
Nobody got blue yet? I gave you like five minutes. Nothing. Nothing. Little front row chatter there. everyone thank you so much for staying tuned in for this dive we just finished our watch change and this is now the midnight to 4 a.m watch um also affectionately known as the dead men's watch um so thank you for continuing to join us we are still um on this unnamed sea mount in papa hanaomo kuakea marine national monument located roughly 85 nautical miles northwest of Kure atoll um, so this particular seamount, we're hoping to better understand um, whether it formed over the Hawaiian hotspot or is it Cretaceous in origin and um, gather some biological samples. It sounds like so far from our previous watch that um, we've seen many uh, bamboo corals in this uh, seamount so far. So um, yeah, join us in the exploration and uh, we'll see what sorts of things we find here and collect some samples and um, make our way up this ridge. All right, good morning. All right, the science row is ready. Roger. Okay, I'm on the line, as my dad says. Hello, everyone. I'm Dan. I'm sitting in the Hercules chair. And I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> Standard operating procedure. <laughs> Did the rest of you already do introductions? No. You're next. Uh, I'm next, okay. Normally you start, yeah. So I'm Mia, hi. I'm serving as the navigator in a seafloor mapping, sea floor mapper <laughs> on this cruise. 